So let's cover how you can dual PC stream for free. I'm not going to get into all the details as far as why you would want to do that or anything. If you're here, you probably already researched that and you just want to know how. So a few pointers, important notes. You do need to have some kind of gigabit network switch. You don't need to try to do this over wireless. It's going to be a terrible experience. And if at all possible, if you can use a hardwire connection when streaming in general, that's always going to be better anyway. So you do need both your PCs connected together with a decent switch, preferably gigabit of some sort. If this is your router and it happens to have gigabit ports on the back of it and you're using those, that's fine too, just so long as they are connected via gigabit. That's the main point. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure OBS is closed, but you do want to install OBS studio on what's going to be your stream PC. And you want to install OBS studio on, of course, your gaming PC, which if you're streaming already, more likely you already have your scene set up, your OBS and everything's already set up on your gaming PC anyway. So you should already be set up on that. So we're just going to install OBS studio on your stream PC, which you should be familiar with that. We won't cover that. Then I will post this link in the description below. So it's easy to click. The main thing we're going to install is this OBS NDI plugin, new tech NDI. This is a plugin that makes all the magic happen. So make sure OBS is closed on the computer. You're going to install this on both of your PCs. You will install this plugin. You will go to this URL that I'll have in the description below. You'll scroll down. You will click on 4.9 Windows installer. As of this time, the time this video is made, that's the latest version. Just find whatever the latest version is. There's not a lot of updates to this, so this should probably be the latest version for a while. Click on that. You'll just run through that installer. It's straightforward. Let's go ahead and undo this. Oh, it goes through here. Next, I already have it installed, so I don't need this. Just leave the defaults, full installation, next, and then you'll just click install, which we don't we don't need to do that in my case because I already have this. All right, so after you're done, it probably wouldn't hurt to restart. Whenever I install something major like that, I always make sure I reboot my computer anyway. So you're going to do that again. You're going to do that on your gaming PC, and you're also going to do that on your stream PC with OBS as well. So. After you've done that and after, again, I like to reboot. So after you've rebooted on your gaming PC, you will launch OBS under the tools menu. You should have a new option under tools. You will have NDI output settings. This is where the magic happens. You click on that. It brings this, this will be disabled by default. What you want to do is the main input. Check that and you want to name it anything you want, just something that's going to be recognizable because when you go to your stream PC in a minute, you're going to have to add a source and you're going to need to recognize what it is, which on most people's network, there's only going to be one anyway, but you'll just name this. Like I named it, the name of my PC is ginger. So I did OBS ginger. You can name it gaming PC, whatever you want the output to be. Go ahead, set that. Okay. Now, this is also assuming that your OBS settings are already set. You've already been streaming. If that's the case, for most of it, it is. Um, you just leave those alone. And those settings will be the same. All right, so you're done with that. So let's pretend we're going over to the stream PC now. So on the stream PC side of things, there's some things we're going to do. You want to copy your OBS settings. Basically, you know, for your stream settings, whatever settings you've been using for your stream, for example, you know, your, whether it's Twitch or whatever, you're going to need to set up your stream key or authenticate to Twitch or whatever you're using. Go ahead and get that set up on your stream PC, just like you did on your gaming PC. You won't be using that feature on your gaming PC anymore, but it doesn't hurt to leave it set on there. So on output, again, you're going to match output settings. You know the way you had them on your gaming pc here is a little bit of a benefit here so 
since you are dual PC streaming, odds are you want to do that for performance improvements. So if you had to cut corners and take the quality down a little bit on your gaming PC because it just couldn't really handle all the games at max quality and the stream encoding at max quality, well, on your stream PC that we're on now, you can go ahead and bump this up. So you, you may not want to copy exactly your settings. You may want to go ahead and bump it up and then go ahead and see what you can handle. Now that all that PC has to worry about is handling the stream itself. It doesn't have to worry about all the, the video game overhead. So we'll touch on this just a little bit encoding settings. So if your stream PC also has, you know, a relatively new Nvidia card, I would say a 20 series or newer you'll probably still want to go ahead and use NV Ink. That's, it's just nowadays, whenever you run NV Ink with max Q or quality, you really, it's getting really hard to tell the difference between that and CPU encoding. Now, if you're looking at a GTX, you know, 1080, you know, 10 series or below, you may, and you have a decent CPU with several cores, like a, you know, a, a Ryzen 5 3600 or something like that. You may want to lean toward uh, GP, uh, CPU encoding, you know, X264. I would just play with both of those. We won't get too deep into the encoding settings now, but that should free you up. You should be able to, to push the envelope a little bit more since you don't have to worry about the gaming overhead anymore. Initially starting, I would try to match pretty close to what you have now and then just make sure you get everything off, you know, and working first comparable what you had for and then you can adjust and tweak from there now as far as anything else video settings this is the only thing that may be different so on the stream PC again that's where we're at now under your video settings it's going to depend on what resolution you're sending out so if you typically stream at 1080p and you have 1080p native resolution your base canvas, which is grayed out because I'm recording right now, is still going to be 1080p output scaled, whatever you typically do. If you're if you're just wanting to send 1080p, which if you're doing Twitch, that's what you're going to want to do, 1080p or 720p. You want to do that here. Your scaling should be handled on your source PC typically. So if you are doing 1080p, if we're just taking what you had, and let's say you were doing 1080p gaming, but then you're streaming at 720p and your output was 720p on your gaming PC. Well, then on here, you're probably going to go ahead and want to just set your base canvas to 720p. Now, in most situations, people that are dual PC streaming and have decent networks, you're probably going to be doing 1080p, I would imagine. You don't have to. It doesn't mean you're doing it wrong if you don't. But I would think in most cases, everybody's going to be doing 1080p. So you'll just match that up, 1080p you know, whatever your output is, 60 FPS. All right, so we're done with that. Now, again, we're on the stream PC. So in your stream PC, in your preview, which I can't enable that because I'm recording, you will have nothing. It should be a fresh install of OBS Studio. So what you're gonna wanna do, all we're going to do is we're gonna add a source and you should have this NDI source right here. So we're gonna add this NDI source, name it whatever you want. You can name it gaming PC, or you can just name it NDI source if that's the only NDI source most of us are gonna have. Click okay. You're gonna get this new box. Now, typically the only thing we're gonna to wanna to touch in this box is a source. So you drop down the source and what do we have here? We have Ginger, OBS Ginger. That's what I named my gaming PC. So if you named it gaming PC, it should find on the network gaming PC. So if you're to this point and you see this, that means your network's happy, you're connected and good to go. So you click that, you'll add that as a source. I'm not going to do that on here because it'll mess up, you know, mine's set up. Then you'll click okay. And after you've done that, you're set. So you'll add that, you'll be good to go. You will, if you need to, you're going to handle it just like you would any other display capture source or any other kind of source. If you need to resize it and fit it perfectly to the, you know, the preview and the screen, go ahead and do that and get that going. After that, you're done. So important points, you will no longer use your gaming PC 
to click start streaming. So if you're like me, if, if you're like me and your PC is your streaming PC is across the room, it's kind of a pain because you actually have to, that's why I have a starting soon scene now. So you'll have to get up, go to the PC. You will click start streaming from there. But after you've done that, you're fine. So everything else you already had set, your stream deck is still going to use your local copy of OBS. You will have OBS open on both PCs whenever you're doing this and you're, you know, your day-to-day -day streaming. Aside from the way you start streams and the way you stop streams, your workflow will remain the same. Most of your interaction, most of the stuff you do is going to be still on your gaming PC the way you have. That's why you're going to play with your scenes and do all those changes that you're going to do just on your gaming PC. You're set. You're ready to go. Some notes. Now, if you're like me and you are a little stingier with your resources and you want even more performance out of your gaming PC, which I haven't really bothered with this, you can start to move over your scenes to the streaming PC on down the road if you want to. I, you can weigh that and see if that's something you want to do. Honestly, I still haven't done it because it just works fine. It already noticed, I, I can already notice considerably better performance whenever I dual PC stream, just as it is now. But it's something to look at if in the future you are considering, you know, redoing all your scenes and doing a lot of work in OBS, you know, overhauling your brand or something. If you're going to be doing all of that anyway, you may want to look into doing more of that on the stream PC instead of the gaming PC, because that would make it even less that your gaming PC is having to do. Anyway, so if you have any questions below, I hope this is pretty straightforward. Just let me know in the comments below if you if you run into any issues. It's really not that bad. Again, main points, you really need to have a decent network, you know, a gigabit connection between, and I'm not talking about your internet connection, I'm talking about your actual local network connection between your PCs. They really need to have, you know, a hardwire network cable, you know, connection between each other to some kind of switch or something. So if you want to catch me, comments below. I'll help you however I can. We do have a Discord. I do have a website. It's classiccable.pro. You can check out stream schedules. I stream on YouTube, occasionally Twitch at the same time, multi-streaming, whenever that works. I typically stream toward the end of the week, Friday through Sunday. If you want to pop in, just hang out, chat. I love meeting people. We can talk about streaming. We can talk about whatever. Um, thanks.